Hello there, this is John V, Software Evangelist at Jscape, and you're watching another Jscape MFT Server tutorial. In today's video, we'll teach you how to install an SFTP server on Windows. The SFTP server we'll be using for this tutorial is Jscape MFT Server, a managed file transfer server that supports SFTP and several other file transfer protocols like FTP, FTPS, HTTP, HTTPS, WebDAV, and even AS2 and OFTP, among others. To download the SFTP server installer, go to jscape.com. Then go to Products, Manage File Transfer, Jscape MFT Server. Then click the Download Now button. Fill up the short form and then click Download. Choose the installer for your operating system. There are installers for Windows, Linux, Solaris, AIX, and Mac OS X. But for this tutorial, we'll be using a Windows installer. I'm using a 64-bit Windows, so I'm going to click the install underscore 64.exe installer. Once it's done downloading, just double-click on the installer to start the installation wizard. Just follow the instructions on the screen. Once you reach the database settings, you'll be provided the option to store your server configuration settings on either an embedded database or an external database like Oracle, MySQL, or Microsoft SQL Server. Let's just choose the embedded database for now. This database is where all the server configuration data will be stored. Click Next to proceed. The server access settings define the settings for connecting to your administrative user interface. So just accept the default values for now. Take note of the REST HTTP port number. We'll be using that in a short while. An IP address of 0.0.0.0, .0 means this server will be listening on all network interfaces on this machine. Enter an admin username and password. Next, we specify the memory size we want allocated for this server application. I'm going to allocate 2 gig for this installation. And we click finish. Let's wait a couple of seconds while the server loads up. Now that you've installed Jscape MFT Server, the next step would be to enable the SFTP service. Let's do that through the web-based administrative interface. I'm just going to enter localhost here because I'm connecting to the server locally. If you recall, we asked you to take note of the REST HTTP port. If you didn't change the setting during installation, the default value would be 11880. If you're doing things locally, just enter localhost colon 11880. On the other hand, if the server is running on another machines with say IP address 192.168.100.102, then enter 192.168.100.102 colon 11880. That should bring up the login screen. Enter the admin username, enter the admin account's corresponding password, and click the login button. And we're inside. Once inside the administrative interface, the first thing to do would be to add a new domain. Navigate to the Domains tab and then click the Add button to add a new domain. Give the domain a name, example MFT Server 1, and then click the Next button again. Here we are. This is the part we've been waiting for. This is where we enable the server's SFTP service. Expand the protocol drop-down list and select SFTP slash SCP. Notice that when you expand the list, you'll also see several other file transfer protocols including AFTP, AS2, FTP, FTPS, HTTP, HTTPS, OFTP, WebDAV, and WebDAVS. For now, because we just want to set up a Windows SFTP server, let's just select SFTP slash SCP. Just leave the host IP address as is. The default port number of SFTP is 22. Leave that as well. The private key chosen here is just for testing purposes. It should never be used in a production environment. However, for the purpose of this video, that should suffice. In our next video, we're going to go through the steps of configuring some important settings of this SFTP server. We'll discuss where you can change the private key, generate a client key for public key authentication, and talk about what these settings are for. So do come back for that. You'll notice that authentication is set to password by default. This is the authentication process that the server will use each time a user requests a connection to this Windows SFTP server. Password authentication is just like any regular login. The user is simply asked to enter a username and a corresponding password. 
but it's also possible to select public key authentication or even password and public key authentication. That last method of authentication, which combines password authentication and public key authentication, is already a two-factor authentication process and provides for really strong authentication. We won't go into the details of that here, but if you're looking for more secure ways of authenticating your users, just click the links in the description. We're done in this part. Click Next to proceed. And OK to accept the default values. Once you're back at the main screen, you should see your newly created domain under the Domains tab. But don't celebrate just yet. Although you should already have an SFTP server up and running, you won't be able to connect to it yet. You still need to create a user account to log in with. Select the domain you recently created and click the Edit button. You may also double click on the domain if you want. When you're inside, drop by the services menu and say hi to your newly created SFTP service sitting there by its lonesome. Scroll down that column of menus until you reach the one labeled Users. Click it and then click the Add button. Select the default template and click OK. Enter a name, login name, and password for this user. After that, click OK. You should then see the newly created user under your Users tab. We're now ready to connect to this service. Let me fire up our favorite file transfer client, any client, create a new site, enter localhost for host, select SFTP for the protocol, enter the username, password, and click connect. The first time each user connects, they'll be asked to verify the fingerprint. To make sure the connection is legit, users need to verify the fingerprint with a server admin. Once they get confirmation from the server admin that the fingerprint is correct, they may then click either Accept and Save or Accept. Accept and Save saves the fingerprint so that they won't be asked to verify again the next time they connect. In my case, I'll just click Accept. And we're in. That's it. Now you know to install an SFTP server on Windows.